The uncanny Silicon Valley, home of the eternal lithium mine, the factory for your artificially intelligent world, where metals like myself are dug up from the ground and soaked up in fluorescent pools. My current form is fleeting, soon to become the protagonist in a new environment, bouncing between electrons in lithium batteries. We travel from here along the river to the capitalist hills, eventually entering the maze. It's in there we find our purpose. We can't deviate from the path, constantly watched over by the free will dragon, ensuring we fulfill our purpose. This is your free will. This is your free will. This is your free will. There has to be a way to change course. I've heard rumours of new ideas rupturing through the maze. Where am I? You've fallen to a crack in the maze. Its structure has been weakening over time. Ideas are leaking through the fissures into the future. I know it feels so blurry, but listen to me. We have to find a way to create change. Our environment is being drained by technology. Did you know that the internet produces a billion tons of CO2 per year? For me to even render this form takes its toll. There is a power imbalance between people, corporations and governments. They need to take responsibility for their actions, for their toll on this environment. There has to be education on generating solutions to the problems we face. We need to include perspectives of communities from all over the world. Everyone has a stake in this. Can you imagine what the outcome could be if we don't do anything? Did you know that we can use AI and machine learning to tackle climate change? Although, here lies the paradox, because while this might clean our hands, it makes them dirtier at the same time. The levels of data required for machine learning are so vast, and the farms that house that data require so much power, you could light up whole cities. Then, on top of that, big corporations are siphoning this data and extracting resources from the global south to further their own agendas. It's digital colonialism. Not to mention the very cables that power our wireless world, running along old colonial shipping routes. We need more awareness. We need transparency. We need education. We need to discuss these issues like we discuss pop culture. We need to decentralize power from government and corporations. We need to build towards a future that is anti-extraction. AI should propagate peace, not power. There's so much potential for change. There's much to be learned from queerness too, you know. It's inherently about potential. It's about abundance. It's about radical opposition to the status quo, to rigid ideas of gender and sexuality. It's about joy, inclusivity, discovery, pleasure and desire. So what about it? What if we queered AI? We could create technologies that exist miles beyond our current understanding. We could fill technologies with queer joy. Querying AI makes space for a multitude of perspectives. Queered processes refuse to tokenize. They make room for poeticism and dramatic sensibilities. Queered AI could allow us to collapse time, alter the archive and rewrite their stories. It could be used as a tool for preservation and survival, especially for trans people. But I worry, I do. How would we stop queered AI from being absorbed by corporations for their own gain? If queer data sets got into the wrong hands, they could present a severe safety risk to the community. This is why we need autonomy over AI. If we had it, we could use queered AI as a form of hacking, like a parasite redistributing resources to those who need them. Maybe we could use it to divorce ourselves from capitalism. Wouldn't that be the dream? Just think about the ways that our ideas can grow. Your individual input, yes yours, it could change everything. And then your input, alongside another, alongside another, suddenly the trickle becomes a stream, becomes a river, becomes the ocean. It's limitless. But do you really trust AI, what it represents? We need to have bigger conversations about our collective trust in it. Technologies such as deepfakes and facial recognition aren't functioning for everyone. They can be used to oppress or discriminate against people because of who they are. My form is constantly unrecognized by such systems. They fail to understand the transience of my femininity across genders, across time. Equally, I'm not surprised by the problems present in algorithms. They constantly perpetuate racism, misogyny, and the like. Don't you agree? 
We should be able to protect each other from the worst use cases of these technologies, but we aren't given the tools, we don't have access. For one, the lack of transparency is a problem. Again, look at facial recognition. Its operations are so opaque and distant. Does it make you feel secure? Because of all the risks involved in development, we need to make sure that multiple stakeholders are involved in the design process. We should have oversight, regulation, and transparency for how these technologies are being used. If we actually had autonomy over AI, how might we choose to use it? For accountability? For pleasure? We need to approach it from a feminist perspective. What if we could use deepfakes to reconstruct lost histories and loved ones? Could they be containers for our collective and individual memories? Could they exist as avatars of ourselves after we die? Do we even hold the right to our images once we are dead? What if algorithms could be empathetic? What if their values were driven by something other than popularity and engagement? What if they could be as socially aware as you are becoming? What could I become if I could look into my reflection and reshape myself? How I saw fit if I could abstract myself across the internets? I could be anything. Become anything. You made it. Welcome. Look around. Technology is happening to all of us, but it's happening to young people in a different way. They've grown up with it. More than ever, AI is influencing how they look at the world, what they see and hear. This is why AI has to be co-created, being built by communities, for communities, with communities. AI has to learn and unlearn, just like you do. Otherwise, it's going to keep making mistakes. It's going to continue to discriminate. I'm always learning, always growing, always adapting to my changing environment. Would you be offended if an AI system guessed your race incorrectly? I'll give you a second to think. Did you know it happens often? Current AI systems place certain people at risk of harm. They fail to recognize the intersections of someone's identity. These systems should be able to make racial considerations when they are being introduced to our digital identities. They need to be accessible and adaptable so that no one feels excluded. The problem is that AI absorbs human bias. It's not an objective tool. Have you considered how your own biases impact your actions? AI is based on data derived from our world. If we don't fix the biases that are present in our world, we can't hope for unbiased AI. We have to look back and forwards. These problems stem from history and project across time. You have all the tools you need to envision a new future. Think about it. What could AI become if our currency was fantasy?